This is going in here. Hello, welcome, or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. On this, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you will know that I have a very big love for vintage bags. I love vintage Chanel, vintage Louis Vuitton, vintage Coach, and I really like old style leather and quality, and I like being able to give more and new life to an older piece. Something I've mentioned before a little bit is that I do do vintage rehab on older leather goods. And I got my start doing vintage coach rehab. So I found old leather bags in mostly thrift stores and restored them, washed them, conditioned them, all that sort of thing, and got them looking beautiful and fresh and new again. And I really enjoy that process. So today I'm going to be showing you a complete rehab project from start to finish. And because of that reason, I will be in different clothes throughout the process of this video because it's going to actually happen over a period of several days. My project today is going to be a vintage coach bleaker backpack from the 90s. And my dad actually found found this bag in some boxes that he had received to dispose of. He found a bunch of vintage coach bags that he had me pick through and see if there are any ones that I wanted or any ones that are worth saving actually because they were all in pretty bad shape. To give you an idea of how bad this bag is, this is the bag and it is in this plastic wrap and was previously in a plastic bag wrapped in a towel because it's, it's pretty bad. It's actually quite moldy. It does have a strong musty odor and I don't like touching it. <laughs> Just from here, I can I can smell the mold. So I'm going to just unwrap the bag for you and show you what we're working with. Blech. Okay, so this is it. This is the bag. It's in pretty bad shape. You can see that there's no structure at all. It's it's covered in this fine mold. <laughs> the tag is actually separated, which is pretty typical for vintage vintage tags. I did get this authenticated on the purse forum. Now I am pretty confident in my ability to authenticate vintage coach pieces at this time, but I do double check with the people on the purse forum. The people on the authenticate this thread on the purse forum in the coach section are marvelous and they're very knowledgeable. So if you ever have a coach piece that you are uncertain about, I would really suggest going to them. And then just in here, you've got the lining. It's a beautiful red color. It's a really nice backpack. I think I mentioned already, this is a Coach Bleeker backpack. So according to the Creed, this is from the year 2000 and it is, it's gonna be a good bag. It's gonna be a good bag. I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to clean it up and make it nice and beautiful again and uh, less awful and covered in mold. <laughs> So I'm going to just put this down and I'm going to transport you to my bathroom, which is where the next step of this rehab process is going to take place. Hello, welcome to my bathroom. I apologize for lighting in here, but it is a bathroom and I'm not gonna be able to really light it up as best as I can. Not that I really have lighting figured out in my actual room, but that's neither here nor there. So as a reminder, this is the bag and this bag is actually made of glove tan leather, vintage glove tan leather, and it is a full leather bag. It is not lined at all. So how do you clean a vintage coach full leather bag? Well, you give it a bath. And I mean that. It's called dunking, and it's a method that a lot of people use in the rehab world, the vintage coach rehab world. I would not suggest dunking a vintage Chanel or a vintage Louis Vuitton or anything like that. I do have videos coming up about how to clean and care for vintage Chanel and vintage Louis Vuitton. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, subscribe for more content. By the way, I do a lot of stuff about various luxury and contemporary brands and items, and it's a fun channel, I personally think. So I'm going to be giving this a bath. And how I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be using two items. I'm going to be using soap, actual soap, dish soap, and lukewarm water. And it's very important that it's lukewarm too cold and it's not going to be good for cleaning it, too hot and it could damage the leather. Lukewarm water and soap. Now most people suggest using Dawn dish soap and the reason they do that is because Dawn is actually the brand of choice for cleaning up oil soaked birds. Like penguins and stuff, they get pollution all over them. They use Dawn dish soap to clean them up because it's very gentle on the feathers. 
I am using seven generation powered by plants free and clear and I found that that works fine. If you're buying soap specifically to clean a vintage coach bag, I suggest Dawn, but pretty much any dish soap that you have will work. As long as it's not like super scented, I wouldn't suggest something super scented unless of course it's Dawn. But yeah, so just seventh generation free and clear dish soap and you know, anything will pretty much do. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be taking this large plastic tub and filling it again with lukewarm water. You want about a teaspoon of soap. You don't need more than that. And you're not really gonna be soaping it down. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be filling it with water and soap, soaking the bag for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to be rinsing the bag out. Because this bag is, I will remind you, covered in mold, I will probably need to do some scrubbing and I might have to do a re-soak. So I'm planning on re-soaking this at least two times. Also, you'll notice the bag is red. It's a very beautiful, like brick red, a little bit brighter than that color. This bag is definitely going to bleed dye. So I'm expecting my first soak to, first of all, turn very, very red and also get very, very dirty. And that's why I'm going to be doing a second soak because I want to get all the mold off. So here we go. All right, so as you can see, it is nice and sudsed up, and this is going in here. One, two, three, go. So what I'm doing now is I'm making sure that it's completely soaked. And just so you know, before I started this, I did empty out all the pockets, and I also took a piece of sticky tape, and I stuck it along the entire inside in order to fully clear everything out. So I know that there isn't anything, like, residue that's inside the bag that's going to be bathed with it. So I'm just going to give it a thorough wipe down. You can see that the water is already turning like this brownie red color. All right, and now it's going to soak for 15 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes later, now I'm going to rinse it out with, again, lukewarm water, and I'll see where we're at. So first, rub it down one more time just to try to loosen anything else that I can. Take a look at that water now. That's a very reddish brown. Look at the dye that it's dripping. I look like I murdered something. It's just a bag and the bag is going to get a new life. It's not going to be murdered. All right, so from what I'm seeing now, there are still some spots of discoloration, but not as many as there were when I first started cleaning it up. And that's because the spots were mostly mold spots. And now there's a little bit of darkening in certain areas, but not nearly as many as there were before. You can see here, uh, you might be able to see, I'm not sure. There's some like blacker looking spots and that's part of the where the mold probably like really took it in. You're probably not gonna be able to see it at all. So next we're going to do step two after the, well, I guess step three. So wash, rinse, step three, the drying. Just to give you an idea of how absolutely crime scene my bathroom looks after doing the initial dunking, like, oh my goodness. It's a good thing that I was planning to clean this right after. Also, my hands don't look any more innocent Okay, so it's very early in the morning, so please excuse me. I just wanted to get this started before I continue the rest of my day because it actually kind of bothered me while I was going to bed after I had done all the rinsing of the bag. And that is the fact that the bag did have mold on it. And I remembered after I had rinsed it and dried it, and it looks pretty good dry so far, but I remembered after I had done all those steps that I forgot to do a very crucial part of the coach, vintage coach rehab process when there's mold involved. And that is 
to add vinegar. Now, vinegar, as some of you may know, kills mold spores, and that is pretty important with a bag that is moldy. Now that it's dried down, it doesn't have the mold flakes on top of it anymore, but it does have, now that it's dry, a pretty strong mold odor. And that leads me to believe that the mold spores weren't killed, which makes sense because I didn't include anything to kill them when I dunked it in the first place. So I'm going to give it a second bath now and I'm going to be adding two cups of vinegar to warm water and I'm going to be soaking it for probably half an hour. And once I'm done with the soak, I'll re-rinse it just the same way I did before and then restart the drying process all over again. I'm not going to bother filming this second bath because you already know what a bath looks like, but just so you know, the second bath is going to include two cups of white vinegar and if you do have a vintage coach bag that has mold, instead of soaking it and then having to re-soak it, just give it a vinegar bath the first time around. You can also add dish soap to the first bath with the vinegar, but the vinegar is the most important part. Once it's done with the vinegar bath, again, I will start it to dry again, and then I will do the conditioning process and start that aspect of the rest of the rehab. So I will see you after that's finished. So this is what it looks like in the vinegar bath. Just to give you an idea, the dye is a lot less saturated in this water. And that's partially because of the first dunk, obviously, where a lot of dye came out. Vinegar can also help dye set, actually. So this might help retain some of the color from leaching out or more of the color leaching out. Again, it was very, very well saturated in the beginning, so I wasn't really concerned about that. But the bright, bright red might have dulled to an ox blood at this point. I'm gonna see. We'll see how it looks like fully dry. I don't mind the oxblood color. I don't mind the bright red color. So I will just be interested to see how this goes. So I'm going to dry this bag in a couple of different steps. First, I'm going to be pressing the water out of it, doing a preliminary dry. And then I'm going to be stuffing it and then I'm going to be unstuffing it. So obviously I'll be showing you all the steps as I do them, but first the preliminary dry. So first, I'm going to completely ruin this towel, but that's fine because it's specifically a junk towel for this purpose. I'm going to just put the bag down on the towel and press out some of the water. You're not going to get the bag completely dry from doing this. You're just going to be pressing out as much water as you can from this preliminary dye. And if you do this and more dye comes off, see here, don't be alarmed. This is part of the bag. My hand is also being dyed bright red. That's fun. That's going to be a fun time. Just squeezing as much water out as I can get. You know what? It doesn't even smell that moldy anymore. That's really nice. I am very pleased with that. Yeah, there's like a lingering smell, but it's not nearly as bad. Okay, now that the bag is padded dry, we want to try to regain some of its shape. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stuffing this bag, not overstuffing, stuffing it just enough with rags and towels. For that I have this towel, which I'm gonna be rolling up and putting in. start getting some of that shape back because you'll see this has a flat bottom. It's supposed to be able to stand up on its own and I want it to eventually be able to do that again. So I'm just stuffing it not too much so that it bulges out on the sides just enough that it's going to get its shape back. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking it to a another space so it can dry. And I'm going to want to have this in a space where like there's more airflow. So I'm gonna be putting this in my living room on a place that I've already prepared for it. Oh my gosh, look at my hands. I don't know how well you can see it, but they are, they are pretty bright red. <laughs> I'm gonna have to scrub down my bathtub after this, but I kind of expected that. That's why I'm not wearing like uphill color. I'm going to be drying it standing up first and then I'm going to be switching sides as I dry it. So it's going to get equal airflow on each part. I'm also going to unhook the straps and I'm going to let them dry flat. So that'll get some of their shape back. It doesn't super matter if the straps are bent or not, but you know, it's a nice thing to have the aesthetic regained. 
All right, so now I'm gonna move it to the drying area. and I think it's going to be able to support itself without the towel inside. So I'm going to pull the towel out now so it can dry better inside without something in there. And there you go. See, it's standing on its own now, which it definitely could not do before. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer and then I'm going to start the conditioning process. So we're back on my couch, which I don't usually film on anymore, but I needed the space for this next part. So we have the much better looking bleaker backpack after it's dry off. It does support itself on its own now. It's got the structure back, which is really nice. You'll notice that it is now a dark oxblood color, which originally it was kind of a brighter red. That's because the leather is still wet. This still does have some drying to do, so it's going to dry down still and once that happens it's probably going to regain a much brighter color again well i'll see i don't actually know what this color is going to look like after it's bathed but it's got this really rich tone in it already so i know that the color is obviously still saturated into the leather so it's gonna be good so now while the leather is still damp it's not soaking wet anymore but it still is damp to the touch you can obviously tell it's saturated i'm going to condition it i'm going to give its first layer of conditioning and buffing i will say that it smells much better after the bath and soaping and now it kind of just smells like kind of old bag as opposed to like moldy must i'm thinking that after the conditioning it actually might just need to be a little bit more aired out and it'll be fine so i'm going to condition it let it fully dry, do the second and third and possibly fourth round of conditioning, and then I'll kind of see where I'm at in terms of the bag. I also just want to give you a quick note. This is the towel I'm using to have it lay on my lap. It was one of the towels I was using to dry the bag, and it does look like I have continued a murder scene. So I'm going to just do the conditioning step now. I am using Leather CPR, not sponsored. I've been using this for years. It was recommended to me on the purse form, and I really like it. It works well for me. There are a number of different leather conditioners that you can use. Black Rocks is one that's a lot of people recommend. Different oils recommended. I am very specific about the conditioners I use though and I don't use any with silicone in them and that's very important. Silicone is a substance that will trap in moisture so when you use it initially on a leather good, you know, a piece of dead skin essentially that still needs to breathe in a way, you're trapping the moisture in and you're not allowing any of it to escape. So it does initially look very moisturized and hydrated because the silicone is trapping the moisture inside, but it also provides a barrier for any, you know, movement and breathing of the leather. It doesn't, it isn't able to breathe with the silicone trapping that moisture in. So the leather does start to break down after a while. Silicone leather conditioners and silicone leather cleaners will degrade your leather over time. So I very much do not recommend them at all. And that includes some leather conditioners and cleaners that are sold by brands. Coach leather conditioner, for instance, is sold by Coach and it contains silicone and I would not recommend using it at all, or at least not for big projects, certainly not for a full rehab project and definitely not in a more expensive bag like a Chanel or a Louis Vuitton. Absolutely not. You want a natural leather conditioner, natural oils. The more natural, the better. And this, for instance, this is completely non-toxic. I am going to be applying this with my fingers. People can use cloths or sponges if they so choose, but I'm going to be applying this with my fingers. And because it's non-toxic, I am comfortable in doing that, especially, you know, since I wash my hands after I handle it. So I'm going to adjust the camera now to give you a better view of the bag in my lap and my method of what I'm gonna be doing with the leather conditioner. So this is the bag, this is my leather conditioner, and this is just 
the rag that I'm going to be using to buff. It is actually just a plain white cotton undershirt. You want white so it doesn't have any possibility of doing color transfer or a very well washed piece of cloth. This is full cotton. Cotton or microfiber are the two most recommended things. You can use microfiber. I have cotton and this is just, you know, I've been using this as like a rag for ages so I know that it's safe. What I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be doing this for the entire bag, is I'm going to just take a little bits of leather conditioner, not very much, and I'm going to work it, again I'm using my fingers for this, I'm going to work it into the leather, all along the leather. You want to make sure that you get the edges, the rolled edges here. And then once it's worked into leather, I'm going to buff it gently with the cloth. And already you might be able to see that there's a difference in shine. So here is a very shiny piece of beautiful leather. It's a very nice color. I'm going to be interested to see what it dries into. And I'm going to just do that for the entirety of this bag. Make sure that you're doing the drawstring part too, as well as the lined inside. Not the suede inside, but there is a side over here that is lined with the leather, and so I'm going to be doing that too. I'm going to be conditioning the inside.
All right, so one murder later, we have the entire conditioned bag. And I apologize for the lighting. It isn't very bright here. It's raining outside and I don't have any extra lights. And that's because I didn't think this far ahead when I wanted to just start conditioning it while it was still damp, not too dry, not too wet. It looks really, really good. And now that it has been fully conditioned, I am going to hang it to dry the rest of the way. And I'm going to flip it as I hang it but that is to preserve the integrity of this little loop here. A lot of people suggest hanging by the strap or the top handle in order to have it retain its shape. Right now, you'll see that it does kind of flop down and that's pretty good. It's pretty good for what it is, but I do want to hang it to retain its shape, but that'll also help it continue to air dry while not losing any of the structure of the bag. At the moment, it still can stand on its own, but because it's so heavy with being still wet, it is collapsing a little bit, but I am pretty happy with how the structure got retained after, you know, washing it and we'll see how it dries the rest of the way. So I will see you in a little bit. And by in a little bit, I mean in about 24 hours because this has to dry overnight. All right, so one overnight dry later. This is what the bag looks like so far. It's still a little bit damp from its vinegar bath and from the conditioning. So that is fine, pretty expected of a bag of this size and this much leather in it. So it's going to continue to dry. I am going to give it another leather conditioning while it's still damp again to rebuff it. And also there is still a little bit of a musty odor. So I'm going to continue to condition it and clean it to eliminate that smell. You'll see that it's a lot brighter than it was initially dunked, so it is lightening up. It's gonna be interesting to see what it looks like when it is fully dry. I don't expect it to be as bright red as it was when I first got it, because I think that part of that was also because it was dehydrated, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see that I have the straps drying straight. So as you can see, it is standing up on its own and that is without any support. There is no more towel inside because I wanted to completely dry without the towel inside. And again, I'm going to just recondition it and see how it is from there. I do want to point out that this is something that is going to happen with bags that did have mold. You'll see this like discoloration spot here. That's either water damage or mold damage. And now I did completely remove the mold and the vinegar bath. I'm confident that it destroyed the spores, but this is just damage that is going to be lasting in the bag. It's going to be a discoloration. And of a bag this age that also came to me in such condition, I'm cool with that. I think that it's kind of like a battle scar and I'm fine with what it's going to look like here and looks pretty good so far. So I'm just gonna condition it and then I will get back to you then. All right, welcome back and welcome back to my couch. I have to figure out how to film better with better lighting. So far, this seems to be the best spot for lighting in my apartment, but I also have like a whole setup for the filming space. I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for how lighting can work better, especially for somebody with glasses who has problems with reflections. I really would appreciate it. Feel free to leave me a comment down below, but getting back to the topic at hand, it is a couple of days later now. After I had the bag dry overnight, I reconditioned it and then had to dry again. What I ended up doing was I ended up putting it in my car to dry overnight and then into the next day to get it hit with as much sun as I possibly could. And that was for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to get it to dry faster and dry quicker, but also sunlight can neutralize mold and bacteria and kill odor. And the bag still did have a musty odor. It no longer smelled like mold, but it does have a bit of an odor still. And I think that's going to actually be taken care of with time and a little bit more sunlight and airing, because at this point it only smells like old bag. After I had it dried, I reconditioned it again and I didn't film that because you already saw me condition it once and you didn't need to see me condition it three times, but I did the same method. I conditioned it, I waited a little bit, and then I buffed it out, and I will now show you the finished product. And this is the final version of the bag, all clean and conditioned. It is fresh and shiny. It really doesn't smell that bad, which is really nice. Mostly it just smells like old leather bags. So again, I need to air it out a little bit more, but it's shiny, it's clean, it looks, it looks pretty good. It can stand on its own now, which I am very proud of. And it, it looks like a really good bag. I do want to mention that it does still, as I, as I think I said before, it does still have some dark spots on it. So it's got these dark spots. First of all, we've got that dark spot on the flap that looks like water damage or mold. 
and underneath as well we've got a couple of big spots that was either from the mold that I got rid of or also additional water damage. And as I mentioned previously in the cleanup, I don't mind that this bag that is literally 21 years old, it is from the year 2000, has a few battle damage scars and stuff like that. I like the fact that it bounced back essentially and is going to be able to have many more years ahead of it now as a perfectly serviceable, nice bag. It did turn out into this beautiful burgundy color, so not as dark as it looked like while dried, but not as bright as it was before because it is now fully hydrated. The straps look great. They're in good condition. The zipper works well. And the inside zipper also works really well. Nice zipper there. And yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I did make sure as I was conditioning it that I were paid a special attention to the drawstring here so it wouldn't get stuck. So now it does slide really smoothly. It doesn't have any problem with sliding on the drawstring, so that makes it easy to use. And yeah, it's just, it's such a cute bag. So this is what it looks like all done up with the drawstring and the magnet. And there we go. I, I'm very pleased and I'm very proud of myself for doing it. I didn't end up having to do much to the hardware because again, I gave it a vinegar bath and that really worked for the hardware to get it cleaned up. I might do a little bit of work on the back zipper still because it is a little bit tarnished still and I might shine that up. But the biggest pieces of hardware are these buckles here and those look really good. Let's see. There we go. And as you can see here, it's actually got coach stamped into the hardware, which is just like a nice cool little detail that they were doing even back in the year 2000. I thought I would give you a quick mod shot of what the bag looks like on the body. It's not a large bag and it's certainly not a mini, it's medium sized and it looks like it would fit a good amount of stuff. I am 5'6 and I have the bag on the longest setting. And that's what it looks like. I think it's really cute. And I hope that you also enjoyed my dinosaur sweater. And yeah, so this is the completed rehab project of this vintage coach bag that was in deplorable condition when I first got it. Now it didn't have any pop stitches, so I didn't have to do any like sewing or repair in that capacity, but I think that I had to do enough considering what it looked like when I first got it. I know this video was kind of long, so I really appreciate it if you watched all the way through. I hope that it was enjoyable to watch or possibly even informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Or if you have an idea for a follow-up video, also feel free to let me know and I'll see what I can do. Bag rehab is one of my hobbies and I actually have quite a few bags in my collection that are older that I did refurbish or rehab in some way to give it like new life that I could be happy with and use. I actually just recently unboxed a vintage Louis Vuitton bag from the 2000s and I'm also planning on doing a video rehab on that so stay tuned if that's something that you're interested in. I'm going to try to get that out at some point later in the year. And if you like this video please do give it a like because it super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! And this is my cat trying to yep, jump onto the laptop. No. Not for you. Not for you. Go away. Go away. That's not where you were supposed to go. <laughs>